guys! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you are getting a thrift to treasure. So five items that I recently thrifted and I am transforming them into beautiful treasures. First and foremost, happy Labor Day. I hope you enjoy today's video and I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. For project one, I thrifted these two rounds. These are perfect for different cloches, and I'm always on the search and hunt for them. Whenever I see them at a thrift store, I always grab them. And at the beginning of this project, when I started painting these, I thought I had a few in my stash. Unfortunately, I did not. I have one of my own, which I'm going to show you how I'm going to use these eventually. Um, but now I'm going to be on the hunt for for a few of those. So for starters, this whole entire video was inspired by my recent live where I transformed a uh, end table and I painted the base prairie gray and you guys I am loving this neutral it is awesome so I am painting uh, all the top and the bottom uh, the sides prairie gray and I am going to apply one even coat uh, to both of these rounds. I should also note uh, that all the supplies that I'm using in today's video you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. For the next step, I am using the transfer called English Twall, and I believe this is discontinued because when I was at the IOD conference in April, we were able to pick diff two different products that they had in the warehouse and they were cleaning it out. So we were very fortunate that we were able to pick those different products, and I chose this one. So I am using the scraps or the leftover from uh, the lives from this week and initially I take my exacto knife here and I cut all the way around um, it still left a little bit of a hang a uh, little overhang so then I trimmed it up with my scissors and just like during the live it's a little bit more um there's a little bit more work that goes into it when it's a round surface like this versus if it's just square so um at the end after i lay down my entire transfer i still have to use the exacto knife just to get rid of a few little straggling pieces and you'll see what i'm talking about now that i think i have it perfectly cut i'm going to pull off that backing and I am going to line it up. And that's what you wanna make sure, like before you lay your transfer down, guys, make sure you have it positioned exactly how you want it because once you lay it down, you're not gonna get it back up. I position it how I want. I then rub it all over. I take the transfer stick and I start rubbing that. And I do that all over the entire piece. And then I start on one side and I just lift up that um, clear backing and I start rubbing and then the transfer starts coming off. Now this is a really detailed um, transfer so you just want to make sure as you're lifting up that backing if any of your pieces do not adhere lay it right back down rub a little bit more and then um, pull it back up. And with that table that I did on my live and uh, using it in today's video that is the one thing I noticed because there's so many little detailed pieces that you, you know, as you're rubbing, you may not get one of them. So lay it back down and rub and it will be perfect. Now, after I did this, um, during my live, I painted the tabletop white. And then on these, I just painted them all the prairie gray. After I laid these down, I could have kicked myself. I'm like, oh, I should have listened to myself. I should have did the center white like I did the table, but that's okay. I still love how they turned out. Now I'm using Big Top and I'm completely sealing the entire piece and I'm applying just one even coat to the entire piece and you can see that when I do that it really makes this transfer pop and you guys I just think it's absolutely gorgeous.
for project two, when I was at the bins, I ran into a viewer and she, um, we had a great conversation and then the new bins came out and I saw this basket and somebody else grabbed it. Well, they must have put it back and she grabbed it and then she came running over and said, I found you this basket. Do you want it? I'm like, heck yeah. I loved it. I loved the shape of it. I love the handles, um, everything. Uh, I did not notice though when I took it that the top was actually, I thought it was... Um, the same type of like basket material, but it's actually like a faux leather and it was peeling in a couple spots. Uh, and so what I decided to do today is use the DIYs Prairie Gray and just paint the entire piece. And uh, once this hardens and I, I think it's gonna give it that added protection and prevent it from peeling any further, uh, and I love how it just complements this basket. I then had to fix one other little problem area, and I'm going to show you that next. One of the things I did not notice is that the twine on one of these handles had come off. And I love using Type Bond. It works on so many different applications, and this is one of them. So, what I'm doing is just applying a little bit of Type Bond to the string, and then from there, I'm just kind of hold it in place until it sets up. Once it sets up, it's going to just hold that perfectly. The last step here is to take DIY's Big Top and seal the paint. And anytime you're using DIY's paint, it can be reactivated with water. So you do need to seal it with some type of top coat, such as Big Top or a poly, or you can use uh, any type of wax, like the clear wax, the white. Uh, I am choosing to use Big Top and I am going to, like I said, apply one even coat. And then this project is complete. And I love how you can transform the look of a bag basket with just a simple color change on the rim. For project three, I recently thrifted this sign and I it caught my eye because I loved the metal against the, the wood. It looks like it was regular like $13.95 in the store. It was at Goodwill. It had been marked down to the 99 cent bin. I cannot believe nobody bought this. I honestly cannot. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to get remove the rest of those stickers, wipe it down very thoroughly and then we are going to transform it. I'm pulling out the prairie gray again and after I applied it I didn't know if this was the best color to pick from. I do want to include it in the entire vignette. Um, maybe I should have did a different color but I really do love how it turned out in the end. So what I'm doing is I'm using uh, the perfectionist paintbrush from DIY paint and you guys I wish I had like 10 of these in my arsenal be for because uh, I'm constantly picking up different colors. I currently have two and uh, I again I mean obviously I can go into my uh, store and I can just grab some but what I'm saying is I love this brush that much. Uh, it's perfect to get into all the details. I love that pointed little tip. So as I'm applying this, I'm going to just apply one even coat of the Prairie Gray to the entire piece. And really my vision here is I'm trying to create a vignette to go with that table that I upcycled on my live from last week. 
Now that I let this dry, I am going in with a damp rag and I am going to wet distress all the raised surfaces. So I'm going to very lightly go over all of the wording and anything that's raised really want to bring out all the details in the piece and the metal had a different it was a different tone than the prairie gray after it dries i'm coming in with big top and i am going to seal the entire piece and that is because anytime you're using diy paint you do need to seal it so i am going to seal this let this dry and then i'm going to add a bit of wax I like this, but I felt like it needed some a little something something. So I am taking a white wax from DIY and my waxing brush. I'm going to apply just a nice even layer of the wax to the entire piece and then wipe it off. So you can see here is what it looks like with the wax all over it. I am taking just a piece of paper towel and I am going to wipe away all the excess. And I really like how the white uh, really gravitates towards all those raised surfaces and makes it pop. For project four, I thrifted this little metal pan and I recently had another metal pan that I upcycled very similarly. I want to use another chunk of the English 12 transfer. So it, for starters, what I do is take a piece of sandpaper and I try to sand down as much of the flag as I possibly can. I want it to be pretty smooth. I could not get all of that um, um, paint off. I was kind of surprised. I thought for sure it would just sand right off and it did not. But that's what I'm doing here is I'm trying to remove the excess paint um, just so that when I do put um, paint on here, it's not showing through. I'm using White Swan from DIY and it is definitely my go-to lately. I was using vintage linen for the longest time and I'm just liking how bright White Swan is. Uh, so what I'm doing is just applying one even coat initially to this. I let that dry, coming back, and then I'm applying another coat. Here I am cutting uh, a round chunk for the back of this and I laid it down like this and I was looking at first I was going to peel it off and I was just going for it guys and then I decided to sleep on it because I didn't know if this is exactly what I wanted to put on this little container. Um, then I'm glad I did that because overnight for whatever reason I had some bleed through which I thought was a little bizarre. So this is the next morning and I'm going to lay that down and that's when I noticed this little bit of bleed through. So I decided to put a coat of Big Top over the entire piece, let that dry and then go back and add another coat of White Swan and that did the trick. I was able to fix the bleed through. Now it's time to add that transfer. I just laid it down and uh, started rubbing with the transfer stick and it turned out awesome, I think. I was trying to figure out if I should add something else to it, such as a rosette in the center, but I think this completes it.
For our fifth and final project, I thrifted this little tiny crate or bin. It looks like it was meant for sugar. And there was a design on there at one point. Uh, it looks like it was kind of scratched off. I love how the um, each of the sides is connected with like almost like a tongue and groove kind of look. I think there's a name for it. And I'm sure somebody out there will know what I'm talking about. But um, I had been told that with that type of connecting on each corner, that's an indication that it's really old. So let me know in the comments if that's true. Uh, I did not like the front of this. And I think there probably had been a top with it and it was missing. So what I'm doing here is I am going to apply just a piece of decoupage paper to the front and I am going to paint this. So I want my paper to really pop. So I'm using white swan here and just applying one even coat um, right now. I thought that it was going to be enough coverage but once it dried I did need to go back and add a second coat. Because I'm using a different piece of paper on the front, I still think it's going to go with that whole vignette. I am going to paint the bottom and all three sides prairie gray. Prairie gray I think is going to go really well with the paper that I chose and I'm applying only one coat of prairie gray to the entire piece. The paper that I chose today is called wallpaper and for a while I was slightly obsessed with the vintage wallpaper. This is wallpaper and uh, so they kind of go hand in hand and I figure if I cannot slide this into this vignette I can create other pieces to go with another vignette um, with either another piece of our vintage wallpaper that is uh, in the line or the, this piece, which is wallpaper. I know, a little confusing. Um, but the wallpaper, the um, images are a little bit smaller, more condensed. The vintage wallpaper, the floral is a, a bit larger. Um, I just love it. So I think this piece is perfect for smalls. I am going to just use a corner and again, line it up how so I don't waste any paper and then just have enough of a little bit of an overhang so that I can sand it to get a nice edge. And then I'm going to take this and refold it back up and put it right back in that plastic. Now I'm using liquid patina again and I am going to line it up, do my starter strip. Uh, this, like I said in previous videos, really helps eliminate uh, the uh, wrinkles and has helps you really have better control over your decoupage paper. Uh, just a nice even layer over the entire piece. Uh, smooth it out and then I take my paintbrush and again just really work out any wrinkles that may have happened and then work my way down and really it's as simple as that guys. I'm using sandpaper now and in a downward motion I'm going to uh, create a really nice clean edge. Uh, this is kind of a rounded edge so in the end I kind of had to like slide the paper back and forth versus downward motion. I was getting nervous though. I was like, oh gosh, I hope I don't tear this paper or anything, but it worked perfect. And by doing that, it kind of like distressed uh, where those two pieces of wood connected and I love it. The next step or the very last step really is I was going to seal it. I then looked and I'm like, oh, I sand it downward on those corners. I need to distress the rest. So I just took that piece of sandpaper and just uh, sand it just randomly all over just to have a little bit of that wood pop through. And that was all I needed. After that, I used Big Top to seal the entire piece. And this project is complete. Let me know in the comments if you think this needs a little something something on the front. I have some additional ideas. I was very torn though because I like the look of it, but I was thinking that it needed something on the front. Oh, 
what did you guys think? I know lots of neutrals, but today's video was completely inspired by my lives from last week. If you didn't check those out, definitely head on over. I took a table that I thrifted for, I think I paid $9.99 for it, and I used Prairie Gray on the base, and then the top I used White Swan, and the English twall. And I wanted to use the extra little pieces um, on different smalls. So when I do create a vignette, whether it be in my vendor booth or at Cranberry Fest, I can pop those pieces in that vignette and tie it all together. So I can't wait to hear what you think. Not my typical bright and vibrant video, but I like um, incorporating neutrals as well to tone down some of those bright colors that I like to use. Again, I wish you guys all a happy and safe Labor Day. Uh, remember tomorrow I am going live. It's a bonus Tuesday live since I'm not going live today we are doing the IOD release. Yes, you heard me right. The 2023 holiday release, which everybody has been waiting for. I'm going live at 1130, showcasing the entire line. Uh, all the products will become available at 11 o'clock on my website, so you can start ordering ahead of time if you want to, to take a peek. And then um, I will also have a bonus video here on YouTube for you. And on my live, I'm taking one of the products and we are going to do a project to inspire you for the holidays. So I hope you can enjoy or join me for that. Um, and we will see you then. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.